we've actually got one last speaker, um, who's one of our um, distinguished alumni, um, and um, uh, Andrew Hicks. Uh, where are you? Are you? Oh, great, please come up. Um, um, he's just graduated. <coughs> oh, a few years ago. A few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's still fresh enough in his mind that he can he can uh, give you his tips. Um, thank you very much. Andrew. Pull the presentation up. Um, firstly, it's great to be here. Uh, it really is. Uh, it's been a few years since I've been on campus. Um, and I just firstly want to congratulate each of you for, for being here. It takes a lot of courage to commit to, to doing a certificate, to a master's, an MBA. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge program. But uh, I've been sitting in exactly the same chair as, as you've been uh, back in 2006. Um, and I want to uh, encourage you uh, with that comment on global mindset. Probably some of you are looking at me and going, um, how the hell has this guy finished an MBA perhaps? Um, but uh, I, I, I pay tribute to my Chinese heritage for uh, youthful books, to say. But um, I, <laughs> for those of you that are Chinese in the room. Um, but um, my journey started back in, in 2009 and, um, and, and um, when I started with uh, my certificate of management. I then went on to a post, uh, postgraduate a diploma in management, master of management. Um, but uh, I'm still a mum's boy, and, and there's a uh, mum at, uh, at graduation, which is a, a very proud moment. But uh, my first degree was actually a Bachelor of Health Science. So a little uh, snapshot of, of, of my career. Uh, it's probably best summed up as uh, anything you can put in a shopping basket. Um, it's pretty easy to uh, understand. So when I started with my um, uh, MBA studies, uh, I actually started my work with uh, Blackmores, uh, and I was with them for three and a half years. Are you all familiar with Blackmore's vitamins? Yep, getting a few nods, which is good. Uh, we obviously we're doing some good job in marketing and getting the brand out there. Um, from Blackmore's, I went on to GlaxoSmithKline, uh, better known for Panadol, uh, Sensodyne, Nicobate, McLean's, um, some of their respiratory products. Um, Jakob's Dow Edwards, best known for Macona. You might know the Law Capsules. Uh, they have uh, provided the Macquarie Graduate School of Management here too with good coffee and tea and Pickwick tea. Uh, and lastly, uh, now selling um, uh, low glycemic index uh, sugar, uh, new cane, uh, with a food technology seller. But the observation here is that, um, you know, a, a, what it used to be a job for life. Uh, that's changed. Uh, it now is about having a life of many jobs. Uh, and that's why the MBA is so relevant, um, to help ensure that you're nimble, flexible uh, and quick moving. So I like to ask the question, why the MBA? Um, sorry, the MBA is hidden in there in the hat. Um, so, uh, that's not why you do an MBA, by the way, to wear a, you know, a silly hat at the end. But um, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, the title you know, is of use. Um, but most people say, how do you know that you've got an MBA? Well, it's often because the person that has it has probably told you. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but, um, but for me, the reason why I did the MBA is at Blackmore's, I, I did a Bachelor of Health Science. Uh, so I, I wanted to have greater commercial acumen. Um, I hadn't done a business degree. Um, I was a naturopath. Uh, so my interests were to, to get my, uh, my teeth into entrepreneurship. Um, and that's what an MBA is all about. So, but the MBA is something more, and, and NGSM in particular, uh, it's really about a program about teamwork. Um, uh, the, the student very kindly was talking about the glo that global mindset and different personalities and culture. Um, that's probably what the most powerful thing is that you, you take from the MBA. Um, and just the ability to adapt to different cultures, different people, different thinking. Um, and great advice, be humble uh, and do listen um, because there's probably something you can learn along the way. But for me, um, it was about getting out of the car and into the office. Uh, so I was a sales rep uh, with Blackboards. Uh, my role now is country manager, uh, managing the Australian New Zealand markets for, for, for my company, uh, which is exciting. Um, but it, the, the MBA was about being your best and growing. Um, so for me, uh, I did uh, take my time uh, from 2009 to 2005. So it did take, uh, 2015, sorry, it did take six years. Um, so I actually completed some 10 subjects in the first two years. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not a race. It's not, uh, you know, it's not about who gets to the finish line first. 
Uh, and that's the beauty with NGSM. For me, it was being able to study part-time, uh, flexible units, um, and maintain my full-time job, uh, which is fantastic. So I encourage you to enjoy the journey and select subjects that might be relevant to where you're at in life now. You do have to do your core subjects, but your electives that are relevant to, to your job and what you're doing. So I put up a picture of this man. Um, do any of you know who this is? Um, that's sad. Um, <laughs> uh, this man was, is Gray Millet, uh, and he was a lecturer here. Um, you, you would know him. Uh, but he was a great man and quite an inspiration to me. Uh, I did finish in 2015, so it wasn't a few years ago. Uh, but but Graham, um, he took me uh, for a number of lessons. I uh, followed this guy around for about four years. Uh, he did new enterprise management, uh, strategic management, uh, healthcare leadership, and, and the last subject, uh, the living case study. Um, but uh, as you can see here, Graham's now actually heading up, he's now CEO of Western Sydney Airport. So pretty high profile now. Um, we certainly need a second airport in Sydney, hopefully cheaper flights. Um, but um, he was great. He, he was actually uh, one of the highlights. Um, and it shouldn't say leader's hip. Sorry, I sent this through to Kate. It split up. So, but he was pretty hip as a leader. Uh, so that's, a, that's a good thing. Um, when I talk about Graham, the reason I talk about Graham is um, uh, one of my favourite subjects, a bit of the crescendo and the, the highlight of, of, of the MBA, was the very last unit that I did. Uh, and I've kind of put that up to kind of bring back some memories. And um, this is to share some of the excitement of what the NBA represents. So this was the living case study. So it's actually opportunity for uh, one of your subjects to go out to a real corporate uh, and work with their management team. You've got a, a really, a real life um, story and, and case study that you're working to. Uh, and in this instance, it was the, the Sydney Opera House. Um, and do you know this woman? Oh, what is the point? So this is this woman you should know, she's Louise Heron. Um, did you hear her on radio with Ellen Jones recently? Yeah. Getting some yeses. So it's sad that that's, you know, it's kind of infamous, but um, she got into a bit of a brawl with Ellen Jones, so Ellen Jones was quite critical uh, of Louise um, about the sales, the Everest race. Yeah. You might remember that. I will know lighting up the sale of the Opera House. But I put that up because Louise, uh, not only is the Sydney Opera House an icon of Sydney, it's an icon of Australia. Um, who of you from overseas uh, know of Sydney because of the Opera House? Seeing a few nods, hands up. Um, with certainly the travels that I've done during the Sydney fireworks that you've just seen, it's, uh, we had fireworks coming off the Opera House. It's a huge icon. So the project for us was actually to value the, the non-intrinsic value of society of the Sydney Opera House. How do you value that? How do you value the arts? Uh, and that was our task. Um, but like all management consultative projects, uh, the task moves um, and what you're asked to do on day one um, during the, the, the case study uh, and the program over 10 weeks, uh, that changes. Um, so what it ended up being about uh, for Louise was how she can transform her organisation, uh, how she can get high levels of engagement from her staff, um, get them inspired and get them behind the mission of, of, of creating an, an inspirational place. Um, but this photo is very special uh, because there's our team of six at the very top left. We're there at the Sydney Opera House delivering our presentation. Um, we're there with the Accenture, uh, the management consultancy firm who was with us for the full program. Uh, we're delivering our speech and at the end we're all punching the air. For me, this was the very last moment that, that saw me get my MBA. It wasn't an exam, it was a presentation. So that was a good moment. Um, and and, and, and for, for every one of you, you will save you that moment because it's so much hard work. So the system pays off. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel uh, and, and, and it's an exciting journey. Um, I just wanted to grab a, a few slides of relevance from the presentation we delivered. Uh, we were a, a mock firm called Peloton Consultancy. Um, we kind of tapped into the purpose and the guiding principles of the Sydney Opera House. And their purpose is to, to be the source of inspiration. Um, their guiding principles are about raising the bar, always advancing, making connections, and guiding with passion. And I pull these out from my present, our presentation to, to Louise and their management team, um, because that, that for me is, is how I live my life. Um, and I think because the Sydney Opera House is such an iconic venue, uh, and such an iconic symbol of Australia, um, it's, there's some great advice in that. 
But uh, rest assured, the, the, the case study and subjects, we talked about lecturers uh, challenging you, they do. Louise challenged me uh, so as the CEO of Sydney Opera House. Uh, we're there in, in meetings and we had the opportunity to question management. Um, and I was asking Louise a question and the first thing she did is she, she said, Andrew, stop. You've got to stop asking closed questions. Um, I kind of went red and, and kind of shut my mouth and then uh, everybody started laughing. Um, but um, there are moments where you can be a little bit embarrassed or uh, it can be a, a little uh, difficult. Um, but the beauty of the MBA is, is, is stepping out of your comfort zone um, and, and making the most of it. During the, the, the Opera House case study, uh, we engaged with staff, we asked what inspired them. So the question I ask you is, is, is the question to go away with is what inspires you? And I think that's something that you, you find through the MBA with the diversity of the program and really tap into that in your projects because you can decide what you research and, and what you study. Um, but it's, uh, again, sorry, balance is supposed to be one word. Um, I do know how to spell. Um, <laughs> sorry, Kate. Um, but importantly, uh, it doesn't mean you need to go to the Swiss Alps or, or, or to Kruger for a safari. Um, but, but travel, take holidays, take time out. Um, studying in the MBA at night, be working full time. Uh, if you're a full time student, good luck, well done. Um, it's a hard thing, I couldn't do it. Um, but uh, you, you've got to take time out. There has to be an aspect of self preservation. Um, if this is all about being more, uh, you know, don't, don't collapse and, and lose the race, uh, it's, 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 it's a marathon to, to win. Um, and as part of that, um, this, this picture is of my little dog, uh, who probably forgot who I was um, during my MBA and, and my family, um, and many dinners that I missed. Um, but it's a cheer squad, so it, it's important to, to, to nurture your, your cheer squad, the people that are supporting you, and, and again, the student talked about exactly the same thing. Um, it's tough, uh, and I admire each of you being here today. You're taking on a, a really uh, big challenge. Uh, it's an exciting challenge, uh, but it's one where you'll grow. But in growing, um, make sure you check in with those that love you, uh, because they'll help you through it. Um, this is a really special story I want to share. Uh, it was probably one of the highlights in addition to the Sydney Opera House in my MBA. And um, I was in a lecture theatre on the other side of the, the campus. Um, do any of you know this woman? <laughs> That's okay, not as well known. This is Melinda O'Rourke. Uh, she uh, had created her own uh, luxury uh, recruitment firm called Mo Luxury. Uh, and she's the, the former um, country manager for Prada. Um, and also the general manager um, for uh, Chanel. Uh, she's a, a former MBA student here at MGSN, and uh, Graham, uh, the CEO of Western Sydney Airport, gentleman like this picture I brought up earlier, in one of his lectures, uh, he would actually invite in uh, guest speakers. And this was so powerful. Um, you know, often you're in a classroom, you're sitting there listening to the professors and lecturers, and they're brilliant, of course. Um, but when you've got guest speakers coming in uh, from the real world, um, from actual businesses and, and sharing their own experiences relevant to your studies, um, it just the, the, the light switch just goes off. Um, and this was one woman that I, I really connected with, with what she was sharing, what she was saying. It was really special how she'd done her MBA and then actually gone off from working in the luxury industry uh, and created her own recruitment firm. Um, and so I thought oh, I should really take advantage of this. So uh, I approached her after uh, the, the end of the, the, the seminar, the session, gave her my business card and said it'd be great to catch up. So um, we, had a, we had a breakfast, caught up, uh, and I just told her she was a recruitment firm, so they asked me what you're passionate about, and, and I happily told her. So I just said what I want to do and what I was passionate about, um, and the breakfast was great. And then about a year and a half later, she called me and said, oh, I've got a, a role that you might be interested in, be happy to chat. So of course I was. You know. So I was at GSK at the time, and, and there was a, a new role, um, launching the luxury T Forte from the US uh, into the Australian market uh, with, with Jenny and Coffee, uh, which um, I interviewed for and got it. So it was a role as a brand ambassador, uh, which was exciting. So what I love with this and, and that networking opportunity is it shows that uh, networking does lead to things. It very is about who you know, um, and of course what you know, that's why you're here, um, but about who you know. So networking is so key. Um, but this, I was with JDE for some four years uh, with T Forte. Um, that role evolved uh, in managing their national account sales team. Um, again, 
uh, through that time, uh, I was seconded to a global project. It's a Dutch business, the world's largest pure plate coffee and tea company, JDE, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, they've gone and bought Krispy Kremes, and um, their chief company, JAB, own Jimmy Choo Shoes and Cordy Perfumes, and um, Rickett Ben Keys, a very big company. Uh, lots of M&A activity. Uh, but they had a SAP implementation project, and, and who here works for SAP or knows of SAP? Getting a few hands. Well, well done, I hope you like it, because I don't. <laughs> not my cup of tea. Um, it's a great program, by the way, uh, not to discourage you, and, and I'm sure there's people in the room that know a lot more about it, but um, I quickly learned that my role isn't as an IT person. Um, my role is, a, is an ambassador, a presenter, a networker, a connector. Um, that's what I'm passionate about. Uh, love public speaking, what have you, but being stuck kind of on a project team wasn't my cup of tea. So for me, whilst it was a, a really passionate global project, uh, going to the Netherlands, we flew business class, it was great. Um, that was about the best thing that came from that to, to an extent. Um, it just wasn't for me. So it invited a conversation with my company, and this is about being brave, um, about either staying and moving on. Um, fortunately, there was good timing with the leadership opportunity that, that arose. Uh, I was part of the, the Japanese government's peak youth program some 15 years ago called the Ship to World Youth. Um, and it's an annual program run by the Japanese government. And uh, it brings together 200 young people on a ship for six weeks. Uh, it's like a university on a ship. Uh, it's incredible on a cruise liner. I did it 15 years ago and I've always wanted to go back. Um, and uh, earlier this year in January and February, uh, for six weeks, I had the opportunity to lead uh, the Australian delegation on that program. Uh, we went to Tokyo and met with um, Shinzo Abe, uh, Prime Minister of Japan. Uh, we met with the Crown Prince and Princess, Princess of Japan, uh, the future Emperor. Uh, we met with the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka uh, and of dignitaries in, in India. Uh, it was an incredible experience. Um, but it was because this came up that it gave me a bit of an out with the, the coffee job. I guess I woke up and smelled a coffee and um, took this leadership opportunity, six weeks, unpaid, fully funded, and thought, where am I going to work? Um, but fortunately, I had a recruiter, thanks to LinkedIn, uh, that reached out back in September last year and approached with the role. And I was in negotiation for about six months with the current role that I've got now. So good things take time. Um, but this experience was amazing. It's been on my bucket list. Um, and I guess what this represents for me, I'll be there in the retirement village, you know, rocking on my rocking chair and looking at pictures and, and going, oh, I'm so pleased I did this, you know. In life, I think you look back and, and you regret what you didn't do. And for me, this is something that I, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for that I did. Um, it was about believing in myself, that says yourself, about belief, uh, about backing yourself. Um, and you know, during the experience, being present and getting the most from it. Uh, and all of these cross-cultural experiences are really powerful. The MBA is one of them. Uh, the students talked about that, uh, that as well. Um, again, it's a, it's a global place and increasingly the MBA and your studies, it's about having a cross-cultural experience and having a world view. Um, enjoy the journey, it's fun. Don't forget to smile um, through, through the difficult times. Um, but um, through your MBA, if you don't already know, it's about um, discovering uh, your passion, living that passion. Um, your MBA and by doing an MBA and by doing management studies really is a lot about living your passion. For me, it's a quest for health. Uh, it's something I've known for a long time. I discovered that 15 years ago. Um, is a, an article of me in front of the Victorian Parliament um, pulling, a plug, pulling the plug on, on healthy school food um, in the school canteen with fatty fried fast foods. Um, I wrote a report on student obesity and nutrition, uh, which I delivered to the, the federal government as part of their peak youth program, which was lots of fun. Um, but it's about tapping into that passion, and that's a passion that I've had now and still do to today. So my current role, um, and I've brought some, um, I've brought some sugar with me, Mike, and the, the bag, um, if you want to pull that, um, is uh, the, the, the government spent about $2 trillion a, a year uh, on, on obesity and diabetes. So we don't have a huge issue. Uh, and, and sugar sweetened um, beverages, um, and, and the tax that's imposed is a large part of that. Um, but my company, we've actually developed, thanks Mark, we've actually developed um, uh, a low GI sugar, which is a direct consumption raw sugar, uh, which is, uh, I guess, good in diabetes and obesity, uh, because we leave more of the good stuff off uh, in sugar meal. 
Um, so it's Australian Invented Technology from Monash University, from my boss, uh, who's an associate professor. Um, and we leave on the sugar, we just wash less of the antioxidants off um, and the polyphenols, and it means it takes longer to be absorbed, therefore it's got a lower GI, therefore it's a lot healthier for you. I'm sure some of you are here in, in the healthcare profession. So this has been a fantastic story, been a lot in the media, uh, in the press through the year, uh, in the Australian, the Australian Financial Review, been on Bluebird Radio, um, Channel 7, Channel 9, perhaps you've seen it, uh, and then there's more to come. Um, and I am giving some of these away for questions at the end. So start thinking of your questions. Uh, and I've eaten some uh, gummies as well too, so keep it on a sugar high, a healthy sugar high. <laughs> so. So, um, so you might juggle getting things like ice cream, it's great, you know. So I say your vocation should be your vacation. So enjoy what you do. It's about, um, it's not about a, a job, it's about a career. And, and that's what the MBA will give you. At the end, you've got three letters after your name that will help you get the job that you want, help you get a career that you want, um, and be strategic. So keep it, keep it fun. Um, the MBA takes you places, working with Neil Perry and collaborating with Rockpool, the Rockpool Dining Group. Uh, we worked with Hayes Chocolates uh, and a number of other confectionery companies. Um, but the, the MBA, as I've said, it will help you stand out. So it's three letters, but it's really about you as a person and, and the value that you have as yourself and the confidence that you bring to the workplace. Um, that's really where it's at. When I was at GSK, I remember um, after getting the job, one of the regional directors said to me, oh, with the pile of applicants, oh, you're the guy with the MBA. And then, for me, it's always stuck in my head that it helps, and it helps you stand out. Um, so the NBA is about establishing brand new. For those that read your investment property magazine, uh, I was in an article in July 2016, but what I talked about was knowledge is power, uh, and that's about the NBA. It's about furthering yourself and education. Um, but importantly, it's important you give back. You know, the NBA, masters, uh, management diplomas, um, you're all going to be better people for society that will be our future leaders. So give back and educate, mentor uh, and network. Um, for me, I've been part for the past two years of a mentoring program called Out for Australia. Um, here's a picture of one of my mentees in 2016, uh, Daniel, um, who's now an associate with the Federal Court. Um, his career's done exceptionally well, uh, but it's important to give back. So at the end of the journey, uh, make sure you give back. Uh, and, and share, share it and share your advice. Um, giving back is also part of charity, part of governance, giving your time and talents. Uh, that's all key. I'm passionate about uh, cancer. Uh, Australia's biggest morning tea, it's obviously coffee and tea. It's a really great charity to, to support. Um, network, uh, attend MGSM and Macquarie Uni events. Um, who, did anybody here attend the Backpack to Briefcase Be With the Boss event in October? Yes, yes, good, good. So, um, I was one of the bosses there, you have a beer with me, I don't really drink beer, but um, it was still fun. <laughs> um, but I hope, did you enjoy it? Yeah, so it was at the Ivy, it was great. So there's networking opportunities that come up even as a student. So I encourage you to go along. It's great to exchange some cards and to expand your networks. Um, along the way, importantly, celebrate your success. Enjoy the journey, because um, you'll be there in no time. And um, importantly, be proud. So I think I'm proud. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so to recap on, on, on my presentation, um, uh, know what your inspiration is and, and tap into that inspiration. Um, know your purpose and have, have, have those guiding principles like the Sydney Opera House. Um, persistence pays off. Um, there will be rewards at the end of the journey, so stick in it for the long run. Um, look after yourself, self-preservation, um, but know who your cheer squad is and your support network. Um, communicate your passions and wants with people in that network, like I did with Melinda, um, and you'll be surprised what comes back. When people know what you want, they want to help you if you help them. Um, it works both ways. Um, go for a career, not a job. So this, that's what this MBA in management is all about. Um, promote yourself, give back, and celebrate success. Uh, and that's it. Any questions? You're all really hungry, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What made you decide? What was the life that went up in your head? 
Yeah, I think for me it's always been a global ambition to create change um, and I've always been passionate for FMCG of, of uh, connecting consumers with brands that, that people love and connecting businesses um, and in, I feel in leadership and, and, and I guess the importance of what you're doing is, is it will enable you to be a future leader. Um, so for me, I can, create, I can create more change as a leader, uh, I can create greater influence and be, be part of something bigger. And for me at the moment, it's taking it up the challenge to global food and beverage manufacturers in, in the fight with sugar and diabetes and obesity, and it's something I'm, something I'm passionate about. So for me, it was about creating change on a global level. Any other questions? Last question. Last question. Yeah, so my question was, uh, sugar, by the way. I keep asking. <laughs> You, you said in your conversation that uh, uh, you should continue uh, in the domain which you are already uh, you already have been doing. So yes. just want to know the reason for that means how 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 uh, important is that and what if you want to change your uh, career line and domain? It's a really good question because I did that. Yeah. Um, and I, I talked about wanting to get out of the car as a sales rep and into the office. Um, and during that time, I mean, at Black Balls, I started with Black Balls in PR and marketing and then went to sales. And, and then that's changed. Um, so I think that the reality is, that, as I, said, I was saying, life is about many jobs these days. You don't have the same job forever. So the beauty of what you're studying is to embrace change. The only constant, isn't it? That death and taxes. Um, so you've got to make the most of it. And it's that flexible thinking and being nimble. And that's why I always say to people, you know, ne never stop, never stop learning. Um, never stop educating yourself and bettering yourself because, you know, restructures or different opportunities, things change, you can move on to the next job. Okay, thank you very much. I don't give them all away, I'm probably the person here that needs that the most. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, that, can, that really concludes um, the part of the day. We've got lunch coming up next. So I'll ask Kate to just come up and give you a brief briefing on the lunch.